Hi, I'm Ryan Schutte. I'm a sophomore at Dickinson College. Today I'm going to be going over a letter from Abraham Lincoln to Carl Schurz written on November 10, 1862, following the midterm elections. Now imagine a fairly young 29-year-old woman uh, approaching the president and saying, the defeat of the administration is the administration's own fault, and then going on to suggest that there is but one way in which you can sustain your administration. Now, why would some random woman be saying something like this to the President of the United States? In reality, she was not a random woman, and she was just a messenger. She was the wife of Carl Schurz, a very well-known and highly respected political and military leader in the Republican Party. But still, these are some pretty harsh words, and one would expect Lincoln's response to be an angry one. In actuality, however, it was quite a common demeanor. Uh, at a time when voter support was dwindling, the support from union leaders was even more important. Uh, the letter just goes to show how crucial Lincoln viewed it, his political relationships um, in order to achieve his end goal, to crush the rebellion and preserve the union free of slavery. Carl Schurz was born in Liebler, Germany, and college educated at the University of Bonn. There he was influenced by one of his professors who was a German nationalist. At the outbreak of the German Revolution in 1848, Schurz joined his mentor in fighting for democratic reform. However, he was forced to flee to France, where he one day met his wife, Marguerite. Together, they immigrated to the United States in 1852. Marguerite became a pioneer for the kindergarten movement in the United States. Uh, Carl Schurz immediately found his way into politics. His anti-slavery sentiments, along with the love from the German-American population, made him rise pretty quickly in the Republican ranks. At the Republican National Convention, he was there in support of Abraham Lincoln and played a vital role in his nomination. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Schurz convinced Abraham Lincoln to give him a command in the Army as Brigadier General. At the very beginning of the war, most Northerners thought it would quickly come to an end. However, a year into the conflict, after engagements at Bull Run, Shiloh Church, Antietam, uh, Stonewall Jackson's Valley Campaign against the Union, McClellan's failed Peninsula Campaign, uh, it caused much of the Northern morale to vanish. Peace Democrats, also known as Copperheads, promised a quick end to this war. Uh, the promise of peace caused a lot of voters to sway against the Republican Party. As a result, the midterm elections hit hard against them. Uh, Democrats had a net gain of 28 seats in the House. They won the state houses of New Jersey, Illinois, Indiana, and they won the governorships of New York and New Jersey. Now this defeat was the fuel for Carl Scherz's letter. Lincoln's return letter on the 10th uh, can be split into three distinct parts, or three paragraphs. The first paragraph, he admits defeat, but also gives his own reasons for the defeat. The second paragraph, he goes over and kind of summarizes um, each of Scherz's claims or his accusations. And then the third, he counters each of these accusations. All right, so going back to the first paragraph, um, he gives three reasons for the defeats. One, the Democrats were left into a majority going into the war. Uh, two, they determined to reinstate themselves into power. And three, the newspapers vilified his administration. Uh, although there were plenty of pro-union newspapers, such as the New York Times, there were Democratic-affiliated newspapers, um, such as the Chicago Times, the Ris Richmond Dispatch, uh, the New York World, that posted plenty of articles uh, questioning the administration's goals, movements. Um, the reason why Lincoln gave these reasons is to shift some of the blame away from his own administration, to his own faults, um, and kind of maintain morale for their goals and keep support going. So going to Lincoln's second paragraph, um, like I said, it kind of summarizes Scherz's arguments against the Lincoln administration, um, reading directly from Lincoln's letter. Uh, the defeat of the administration is the administration's own fault, opinion. Uh, it admitted its professed opponents to his counsels, uh, asserted as a fact. It placed the army, now in a great power in this republic, into the hands of its enemies, asserted as a fact and in all personal questions, to be hostile to the party of the government seemed to be a title to consideration, asserted as a fact. Now notice that after each of uh, 
Scherz's accusations, Lincoln put in parentheses, opinion or asserted as a fact. Uh, this is his way of showing a slight irritation or slight annoyance of hearing some of these accusations. I mean, after all, it wasn't the first time that he had heard many of these same claims. Uh, for example, Congressman David Field sent a letter the same day as Scherz with his four complaints of the Lincoln administration. So, really, it's important to notice how not overly hostile Lincoln is. I mean, he's quite calm. He uh, just shows in a mild manner how uh, this isn't some unusual thing that he's hearing from Scherz. So, moving on to the third paragraph, uh, this is where Lincoln goes over these accusations and refutes them. Um, I won't go through every single one of those, but um, one example is he refutes Scherz's claim that he, Lincoln put the army into the hands of its enemies. I mean, I mean, this is a pretty easy one for Lincoln. He's talking to Carl Scherz, a uh, Republican military and political leader that he himself had appointed. So, I mean, that's at least one example where Scherz is wrong. Um, I mean, he's not doing this to assert his power or to make Scherz uh, feel belittled in any way. He's doing it just to kind of remind Scherz of the facts and to not be irrational in the face of these political defeats from the midterms. Um, he wants to make him remember that the goals of the administration are shared between the two of them, and that uh, just to keep remaining loyal and to just be calm. In his autobiography, Carl Schurz recalls the chain of letters and the encounter that they had uh, shortly after this letter was written. He mentions how Lincoln was friendly, he was joking, he wasn't angry or mad. Um, he said that even though his letter might have seemed a little... Uh, hostile a little quick. It was just because he was uh, receiving so much criticism from all directions, from so many leaders in the Union, and he kind of took it out all at once on uh, Schurz. Um, he even recalls uh, Lincoln encouraging to keep writing, to keep this correspondence going, um, and Schurz commented that they left better friends than ever from that meeting. At first glance, Lincoln's letter might give the impression of a hostile relationship. It might give the impression of a cold relationship. Um, I mean, his, his letter was pretty much dedicated to refuting Carl Scherz's initial letter of the 8th. But that's just not the case. What I keep stressing, what I keep pointing out, is Lincoln's calm demeanor, the lack of hostility in his response. Um, I mean, from an outside view, many would see Carl Scherz as a clear subordinate overstepping his boundaries. And even so, Lincoln was willing to accept some insubordination to maintain political harmony. He realized how crucial that relationship was to, to his end goal. Without backing from his leaders, there would be no backing for the war itself. I mean, it just goes to show how crucial Lincoln emphasized his political relationships um, at the time of war to achieving his end goal to crush the rebellion, preserve the Union free of slavery.